While I was over on Amazon Japan having a browse around, I saw this, thought it might be interesting, so I picked one up. It's a globe that, once viewed through an accompanying app that's available for iOS or Android, overlays that globe with educational information that's aimed at children. Now, the globe itself is just a lightweight, hollow, hard plastic, lightly textured ball, and it comes with a simple plastic plinth. It's the app that makes this interesting. And while the globe is only being sold in Japan, the QR code that's on the back of the box leads to an English language version of the app that's available in the UK App Store and no doubt in other countries as well. There are a selection of different things that can be overlaid on the globe and I'm going to start off with countries. This lets you identify a particular country by the flag that's displayed hovering above it. Clicking on that then brings up an information panel with basic stats about that country. You'll notice the formatting on the text at the top here isn't perfect, but then again, when I bought this, I really wasn't sure whether or not any of the app information would be in English, so I can't really complain. Of course, I wondered if it would appear any different in landscape mode, but while you can view the globe like that, when you enter the information panel, the, the orientation on it is wrong. So the app is definitely only designed to be used in portrait mode. Now, I also loaded the app up on an iPad as I thought this would be easier to see on camera and I could also see whether or not the interface was any different. But no, it's just a blown up version of the one that's available on the phone. Now let's move on to another mode. There's one that's kind of real time. Well, pretty close to it. This is a mode that can show the current and recent weather conditions on the planet. The overlays for this can be switched between clouds, rain and temperature. And you can play animations of these leading up to the current point. And you can also switch on the information overlay, which amongst other things shows the country's names and the borders. So, for example, I can turn on the heat map and then rotate the globe around to find the hottest part at the moment. And then if I turn the overlay on, it shows that I'm looking at northern India. And again, you can watch an animation and see how the heat varies over the course of a day. And you can also scrub through this with your finger as well if you want to speed it up. Right, so let's move through the other modes. So with this one, we can see the world at night and you can look for the parts that are quite brightly lit up and again, turn on an overlay and it will help you identify the parts of the earth that you're looking at. And we've also got a picture atlas and this links images that hover above the earth to small paragraphs of facts about something. And you can see from the simple level of information that's contained within these, the kind of age group that this educational toy is being aimed at. Of course, one other thing that appeals to a lot of children is dinosaurs. And there is a dinosaur map. This lets you look at different types of dinosaurs, depending upon the part of the world where the fossils were found. And then clicking on one of those will reveal a page of information about that particular creature. And you can filter the map down by three periods, Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. Have I said that right? Anyway, those three periods. But moving on, there's a traditional type globe overlay as well. That one has three modes. It's got political, and yeah, there's a spelling mistake on that word. Not the end of the world, I suppose. The other options you've got are topographic and satellite. Now the next mode is called pop-up peaks. This shows the height of the land and also has a mode in it that enables you to highlight various features from there, which once selected again, will drill down into more information. And now to quickly round things off with three more playful type modes. First, you can type in the name of a place and then an elephant will point out where that is on the globe. And it's your job to rotate it to find the elephant. To help out, the opposite side of the globe is marked with an underdog, which I thought was a pretty funny joke. Well, I mean, I wasn't rolling about, but it made me smile. Next, you can map a picture onto the sphere. So, yeah, there's that. And then, finally, you can type in a message of up to 21 characters that you want to circle around the globe. So from that brief demonstration, you might think that this is a pretty cool educational toy. And, of course, if you want to pick one up, I've got the usual... Amazon, in this case Japan, affiliate links in the video description. Mine only took around four days to get to the UK from Japan and the price in Japan is the equivalent of £28.43, which is about 40 US dollars and including the delivery costs to my house, it ended up costing me £43. But now let me tell you why I'm definitely not recommending this. 
Well, like most AR experiences, or at least the ones that I've had up to this point, it's as glitchy as all heck. And when you zoom in, things get uncomfortably shaky. So you end up putting your phone on a stand to try and steady things up. But then you're left with this very weird, unintuitive and uncomfortable interface. Because while you can pinch your phone screen to zoom in and you can select things on there, you can't rotate the virtual globe on the screen. For that, no, you have to physically rotate the physical plastic globe that's at arm's length. It has to be there so you can get it in shot in the centre of the screen on the camera. So rotating a globe on a screen with a swipe just feels so natural nowadays that you end up accidentally trying to do it again and again before thinking, oh, no, hold on, and reaching back over to that physical globe again. It's just very awkward. You've got to have it perfectly lined up, and even then it still breaks up frequently if you get one of your fingers in the way, or if the reflections put it off, or if a day of the week has a Y in it. Also, once you've got it lined up, you're not even looking at the physical globe anymore. It's hidden behind your phone screen, or tablet screen on the screen it's overlaid with a full globe graphic so the physical plastic ball might as well not be there you don't even look at it you're just using it like a giant trackball and then after a while you start to realize that this would work so much better without that plastic ball i mean take away the ar and you've got an educational app with a globe that you can rotate and pinch and zoom with your fingers basically the google earth touch interface and then if it weren't like that, you could use it with your phone or tablet held at any angle. You could have it flat on a table, you could put it on your knee, you could look at it lying in bed. You wouldn't have to line things up perfectly like you were trying to take a photo of the globe to sell it on eBay. Yeah, perhaps a, a newer phone or a tablet would have locked onto the globe better. But it's just the whole issue of trying to shoehorn an idea into an area where it doesn't really add anything. But then again, I'm not an eight-year-old child, in case you hadn't noticed. Perhaps the AR aspect here is the kind of thing that would engage them and encourage interaction in a way that a plain old non-AR app wouldn't. I've got no idea, but I just say, make your own mind up on this one. But I do want to say something about that price. I've realised that the plastic globe is the modern day equivalent of copy protection. For those with long enough memories, I'm thinking of things like the lens lock that came with Elite or the code wheel with Monkey Island. Physical copy protection devices that you needed if you wanted to use the accompanying software. Now let's not get into cracked games here, I'm just talking about the fact that this globe costs perhaps £2 at most to make and put in a box, probably quite a bit less, but it sells for the equivalent of £28. So you're really paying for the app. But since they'd have difficulty selling an app like this for anything more than a couple of pounds in an app store nowadays, the smart idea is to give away the app for free with no in-app purchases or adverts, but to use that app, you need the globe that's printed up with this specific pattern. It's actually a very clever move and it explains why this app only works in AR. It's not because it's a good experience, it's because it's a way to sell an app for more than just a few pennies. And given the fact this tactic seems to have worked here, it feels likely that we're going to be seeing more apps that have unnecessary AR tie-ins to physical objects in the future. But again, don't let me put you off. I've still got those links in the video description. However, I'm pretty sure you can find something better to spend your £43 on. But anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.